Assalamu alaikum and good evening to you all. Welcome to the ninth episode and the grand finale of Health Talk Season 1, powered by SB Bangladesh Chapter and supported by Bangladesh Society of Medicine. I am Dr. Prince Kausar, your tonight's host. As the grand finale, today's topic is going to be very special. Topic of today's program is the hottest topic of the year, and the person who are here with us are also very, very special. So don't miss any part of today's program and invite your doctor friends or colleagues to join with you with the program. The speaker of today's program is an immensely renowned professor of our country. He is none other than Professor Suhail Muhammad Arafat Sir. He is the chairman of the Department of Internal Medicine, BSMMU. He will be discussing today on COVID-19 vaccine and update. As I already told, this is the most talked about topic of the time. As the chairperson, we have undoubtedly one of the best physician of our country and the person for whom this health talk program was made possible, Professor H.A.M. Najmul Ahasan Sir. He is the current governor of ACP Bangladesh chapter and head of the department and professor of medicine, Popular Medical College. We also have Muhammad Mahabubul Islam Mojumdar sir as the panelist with us. He is the head of the department and professor of medicine, Central Medical College and Hospital Kumilla. We also have Professor MD Rubayat Amin sir as another panelist with us. He is the professor of medicine, Dhaka Medical College and secretary for research, Bangladesh Society of Medicine. Today's program will be moderated by our very own Dr. Fazle Rabbi Chaudhary sir. He is the assistant professor of medicine, BSMNU. During the live session, you can ask topic related questions in the comment section. We shall try to answer them on the question and answer session, which will start right after the presentation. So, without doing any further delay, let me hand over the session to Dr. Fazle Rabbi Choudhury, sir, to moderate today's program. Dr. Fazle Rabbi Choudhury, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Prince. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much to all. And I, at the beginning of this, before going to the session, I want to congratulate all of you because we are standing in the eve of our National Victory Day. Tomorrow is 16 December and uh, let's celebrate and express our joy together uh, for, this, uh, for this victory where uh, thousands and hundreds of lives uh, were sacrificed and we are here today. Uh, to be as a strong and independent country and dominating in all sphere. Uh, this is uh, ACP American College of Physician Bangladesh chapters consecutive ninth session. Uh, they call it Health Talk 9 and I am very proud and privileged to moderate today's session. Today's topic is a very time demanding topic. We used to say it's a hot take topic. Vaccine, 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 vaccine is everywhere and some people in the world are already uh, started getting the vaccine. We have seen Donald Trump's uh, uh, tweet a couple of hours back where he congratulated all of the world because the United States just started vaccine yesterday, their mass vaccination campaign. We also know that United Kingdom, um, and they have started their mass vaccination program on last Tuesday and uh, subsequently many countries are going to come in the row and uh, it's it's really a tremendous effort of the uh, uh, a tremendous contribution of the science where it's been proven that uh, unity and coming into a single umbrella what the scientists can do and how they are trying to bail out from up uh, bail out us from this pandemic uh, dr prince already introduced the panelists but uh, nevertheless i want to say brief uh, about them uh, today uh, uh, this program is organized by, as I said, ACP Bangladesh chapter, and it is sponsored by Bangladesh Society of Medicine, and it will be chaired by uh, Professor H.M. Nazmul Hassan. He is also the former president of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. He was uh, actually teacher of the teachers. He, uh, he was editor-in-chief of multiple renowned uh, journals of our country, and he's been, uh, he's been a very active and vibrant member of uh, Bangladesh College of Physician and Surgeon, currently serving as the Professor of Medicine, Popular Medical College. He was also the former head of the department, Dhaka Medical College. Today, we uh, have a distinguished speaker, Professor Swahil Mahmoud Arafat. 
Professor Arafat is currently the chairman of uh, Department of Internal Medicine, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Medical University. He is also uh, serving as the general secretary of Association of Physicians of Bangladesh, member secretary of research training monitoring cell of BCPS. He is um, he he conducted a cu couple of um, uh, research in COVID-19 in BSMMU. He was looking on the risk factor severity scoring and uh, socio-demographic data on COVID-19 patients admitted in BSMMU. He was also actively repurposing a drug, cotrimoxazole, in COVID-19 patients. So he's he's very active since the beginning, and he is also the one of the chief coordinator of uh, COVID-19 cell of BSMMU. Today's session will be uh, uh, will be uh, enriched by a couple of gorgeous panelists. Uh, I would like to introduce Professor Muhammad Mahabubul Islam Mojumdar. Professor Mojumdar is the former head of the department, Kumilla Medical College. Uh, he is currently serving as head of the department, Central Medical College Hospital, Kumilla. He is also the president, uh, Kumilla chapter of Bangladesh Society of Medicine. Uh, Professor Mojumdar is famous for his uh, area of interest, which is particularly the osteoporosis, but also he is quite popular for his contribution in antimicrobial resistance in Bangladesh. He also uh, the vice president of Bangladesh Society of Infectious and Tropical Disease. The second panelist is Professor Muhammad Robed Amin, a uh, champion of clinical research. He is, uh, he is the professor of medicine, Dhaka Medical College Hospital. Also, he is the general secretary of Toxicology Society of Bangladesh. He is also the secretary for research, Bangladesh Society of Medicine and uh, hosting this year's Tropical and Infectious Disease Congress, which is supposed to be happen virtually on 18th and 19th December. Uh, so uh, before uh, not spending too long, I would like to invite our today's speaker, Professor Sohail Mahmoud Arafat, to uh, share his presentation with us. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor Rabbi, uh, the moderator of today's session. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, on this uh, real uh, great occasion, I am very fortunate to be here in front of such a learned panelist. Uh, my heartfelt thanks and gratitude goes to Professor Nazmul Hassan, sir, the president of the Bangladesh chapter of the American College of Physicians. Uh, I am very much uh, privileged. Uh, for inviting me for give a talk on the COVID vaccines. Uh, also, my respected panelist, uh, Professor Mahmoud Islam Ozumdar, my one of my mentors, and Professor Rubey Damin, very good friend of mine. So hopefully, we'll have a, 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 a nice time with you guys. Unfortunately, I have some problem with my skin sharing. That means some dis, uh, I mean this uh, coordination between skin sharing and my talk. Uh, anyway, may I request Mr. Prince to start the first slide? Mr. Prince. Prince. Can you see the slide, sir? Can okay, thank you. Slide? Thank you. Yes, I am seeing, but uh, I think, uh, can you make it a slideshow like that? A little bit bigger? Yes. yes. So already Dr. Rabia said the COVID vaccine, which is a really the uh, I mean, the, the talk of the whole world uh, in recent days, in the uh, beginning of this year. So I'm, uh, I would like to give some glimpses on the vaccines, what is happening all over the world, including uh, some background history. So can I move the second slide, please? So at the beginning of 2020, that whole world is jubilant at the night uh, of celebration of 31st nights and uh, uh, welcoming the 2020. The, it may be New York, it can be Times Square or Sydney or even uh, Dubai. But we didn't apprehend something is going on the next couple of months 
that was a really bad year. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, we are go going through a uh, really a bad patch of life. Uh, we are fortunate, still we are surviving. If you look at the uh, some data in the recent days, can you move next slide? The next slide, please. And due to this uh, simple, tiny microscopic, nano microscopic creature that has changed the whole life of the whole generation of living on this planet. So for this little creature, we are going to have on our lives, on our daily lives and our, our uh, personal lives everywhere. If you see the data, can you move on the next slide, please? Uh, if you look at the data like that, uh, we, for the recent COVID, uh, I mean, already we have lost so many precious life from our uh, surrounding global globes. Almost more than 72 million people have been suffered and we have lost more than 1 million people. Not a, not a worse in Bangladesh. If you look around the data, till it started, that was around more than 4 lakhs people have been infected and we have lost 700 precious lives. With the physicians are not escaped as well. We have lost many of our next slide. We have lost many of our friends and teachers, students, till yesterday, we have lost more than hundreds of our fellow colleagues. May Allah bless all their souls with the peace in the Jannat. So we have to come around from this deadly virus. Next slide. It's not only life, it has uh, uh, destroyed the economy and every sphere of life. Look at the GDP that is going down, there is stock market dipping down, and the, all the things happening in last one year. Next slide, please. Also, a lot of uh, joblessness, uh, lots of people love their works, and even the flying flights are also getting scarcer day by day. Can you know, next slide? There's also use dropping, dropping only the only one industry rising, that is the pharmaceuticals. They must be thankful to COVID because they're only survivors in this really bad global pandemic. Next slide. So we have to we we have to come back to a normal life, but how is possible? There's only one we can go back to a life that is acquiring hard immunity. According to WHO, also the public specialists like Azra Ghani working in Imperial College, they think that almost we have to be immune, at least 70% of the whole population need to be immune to be on the safe side to have a normal life back in the coming futures. Next slide, please. And how we can get this herd immunity? There's two ways. One can be direct infection, one can be vaccination. But causing the direct infection with such a deadly virus will cause loss of, uh, loss of uh, deaths and uh, millions of deaths, and that is not acceptable. That's the only way we can come back, that is a good vaccine. Within the vaccination, if we can mix, immunize the majority of people, the immunized vaccinated people can protect even a non-infected person. So we are the, we are really eagerly waiting and longing for a very good vaccine, which can give back our previous life and the previous world. Next slide, please. So it's a good vaccine will be a game changer that will change our life back to normal. Next slide. If we go back the, uh, to the past history of vaccine, you know, the vaccine, which is we are really longing for, that has changed a lot of infection to be eradicated or to be less uh, number of infection by causing the, by giving a good vaccination. That was started in the 1721, that was variolation. But that was the perfect one that causes few loss of life. So there is outcry. Next time came the time of Jena. Next slide, please. Then 18th century, the uh, renowned that our really the, the father of vaccinology, the Edward Jenner, who put a hypothesis that some people who have got infection with the cow fox, cowpox might be immune to the or less susceptible to the smallpox. So he proved this hypothesis. Next slide, please. By putting, next slide, please. The, by putting some, uh, injecting some, please, pre previous slide, please. They've, uh, they've uh, in fact, uh, that inoculated some eight-year-old boy James Phipps with some pass from a cow box lesion from a milkman's southern elements. And that was proved to be a protection against the smallpox. And though the, the, pers the little boy, Mr. Uh, the, Mr. James, was exposed to some smallpox, 
injections as well uh, by, uh, virus, but he did not develop any infection even on 20 subsequent exposure. That proves the hypothesis of Jenner. And that was the beginning of the vaccination in the year 1796. Next slide, please. And this way that was going on. Next slide. So from this cowpox, that means the pox of a cow, the name vaccination came. In Latin, we know the cow means vaccine means cow. And so that was coming from the cow. That was that's the reason behind that was called vaccine. So this process is called vaccination. So related to cow, that is the main uh, origin of the term of the vaccine from the vaxa, that Latin word standing for cow. Next slide, please. And subsequently, we got few other vaccines, few other to, to which kept the human uh, generation running the normal life. Next slide, please. And that was a discovery of different vaccines, different types. Next slide, please. This is a few vaccines which has been being discovered till the last, last few years. Next slide, please. And we can see the efficacy of the vaccines. This is a dramatic, uh, dramatic uh, I mean, diagrammatic representation of uh, the vaccines causing the, what a beneficial uh, life to our public health, to our the world's, our signal lives. If you look at the diphtheria vaccine, whooping cough vaccine, and measles vaccines, which was really deadly things, what was happening in the, for, was causing great damage to the human lives. But subsequently, that due to the uh, invention of the discovery of the vaccines, and that the infection is coming uh, really lower and lower and lower day by day and year to years. So these diseases are almost not, not non-existing in our day-to-day -day practice. Next slide, please. But problem is that regarding the COVID vaccine, we know that traditionally that to create and discover a new vaccine is a long way to go. Usually from the discovery and target validation, the clinical staging, then clinical essay application phase one, phase two, phase three, and regulatory review. That's a long way to go. That means almost 10 to 20 years. But for the such a deadly virus for COVID, can you wait that long? So we have to take a different way to make the things expedited. Next slide, please. So just a brief idea that you're on the platform for vaccine. There are platform vaccines means that uh, the different types of vaccine we know. Next slide. Like we you know that uh, DNA vaccines. DNA vaccines, some the DNA parts, uh, the gene, genetic matter like DNA that containing the targeted protein is introduced in a person but with a carrier plasmid so that it's not destroyed in the uh, in the circulation or inside the cell. And when that is incorporated in the nucleus, they produce some protein. And in this case, the COVID virus cases. They usually tagged with the uh, M protein, the DNA, which is coding for the S protein. And this S protein ultimately leads to, uh, leads to production of antibody response. So this type of vaccine is one of the platform that is being uh, considered for the production of COVID vaccine. Next slide, please. The, the mRNA vaccines, that is the main point of interest in the recent days regarding the vaccines, COVID vaccines. You know, that mRNA vaccines is almost like DNA vaccines, but it escapes the process of using the DNA to produce the mRNA. The direct mRNA is injected along with this uh, covered by a nanoparticle, the lipid nanoparticle, and that is being transmitted or uh, 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 entered into the cell. And where there is lipolysis and that mRNA enters the cytoplasm, and the cytoplasm, they produce the targeted protein that is S protein. And this is protein that uh, is expressed on the cell surface, leading to the production of host antibody. And this antibody is, is protective to keep the person safe from the infection caused by COVID virus. Next slide, please. But this type of viruses have uh, vaccines uh, uh, using this platform, some advantages. The advantages is very quick, easy to mass produce, that's a cheaper and safe to be used in immunosuppressed state, but it's yet not to be proven that is theoretical. So these are the things we can have the advantage with the DNA and RNA vaccines. But problem is that no, no such of vaccines are still used in practice. But that can also there's a theoretical chance of can, that they can persist, persist in the body for a long period of time and may incorporate the whole genome. 
may cause some mutation or develop tumor cells. And what I've said before, there's no previous experience. It is just a new type of platform to produce a vaccine. But when the advantage is very quick, we can skip many steps so we can have the vaccine in a short time with what we are getting really in a practical life. Next slide, please. And as vectors, the vector vaccine is a sub uh, virus is used at vector, then which uh, is uh, uh, along with the antigen that's pushed inside the uh, uh, body and that produces the antibody of the targeted targeting the amount of S protein. So this is this vector vaccine that is also very widely used and uh, recently used in the production of COVID vaccine. Next slide, please. That is same thing that is introduced cell mediated human response. This and parenthesis, this as this is back to this virus. So it cannot be given in the immunosuppressed patient. It's a little bit cautious. Complicated to produce or require specialized facilities. And as this is a genetically modified organism that can the potential risks to the environment. So that is the uh, uh, little bit disadvantage of having this type of vector vaccines. Next slide. Live attenuated effects that is being used uh, in previous in few vaccination uh, cases in, in, in the production of few vaccines. So this is the uh, the virus that attenuated. That means that is not that much uh, harmful to the body and that is not infected. And this virus is alive, but in that less infected and still able to promote a robust immune response. And this live attenuated virus advantages that amount of production of immunity is much higher than other processes. Next slide, please. So a strong cell mediated immunity and that single dose is sufficient. In other cases, usually you have to give two doses and that's proven that is proven because that has been previously used in few other cases, few other types of vaccines. But the so same thing happens, that is live attenuated, it is a little bit, uh, uh, we are reserved about the immunosuppressive to use it in immunosuppressive stage. That is complicated to produce. And this virus can accumulate mutations like uh, that is it's live attenuated. So the chance of mutation while it replicates to revert back to its infective form. So that's the producing the infection. Next slide, please. The inactive virus, the virus is killed or inactivated. So it is dead virus and by chemicals and heat and radiations. And this dead virus enters the cell and they produce uh, the antibody, but they can, the advantage is it does not replicate like live attenuated vaccines, but produce a host uh, immune response. So this is also a good uh, platform to produce a, a good amount of immunity. Next slide, please. So here, as it is inactivated vaccines, so there is chance of less infection and usually no refrigeration should occur. But problem is that at least it is also dealing with virus to recover specialist facilities may have less indigenity, thus less protection because the process of inactivation, the chance of some changes or damage to the genes, which is targeted uh, to produce the antibody. So there is sometimes a less chance of antigenicity. Next slide, please. There's some other sub vaccines like some part of the uh, coronavirus. The viral proteins, particularly the split proteins, are uh, extracted and then made, uh, then used uh, as a platform to produce the antibody. So that is a sub vaccine. There's few other com few companies like Novamax and Global Biopharma using this, trying with this type of vaccines. Next slide. The few others, virus like particle, split virus vaccine. So these are the few platforms which are being used to produce a good vaccine. Next one. So if we see the, the COVID-19 vaccines pipelines, so if we see this, we have discussed different type of platforms. If we go for the DNA vaccines, you see the Innovio that is being, uh, uh, they, are, they are trying with this type of vaccines to produce for COVID virus. This RNA or mRNA vaccines that is being used to fiber biotech as well as Moderna, all of you know I'm used. So this is uh, the two types already uh, in uh, in the process of development and one Pfizer is already in the market. So 
can, uh, but these two type of uh, vaccines is uh, are these two type of vaccine depending uh, using this platform are not available in uh, in in any other in any other diseases or in no other pre existing vaccines have used this sort of platforms. There's vital vector vaccine. The what I have said that is the second one that is that used by AstraZeneca or Oxford AstraZeneca. I can see you know and uh, there's Russian Sputnik vaccine. They have used these viral vector vaccines. These are harmless virus vector that transport by the gene. But uh, in case of Ebola, Zika, and dengue, dengue, dengue vaccine, they have been using this viral vector vaccine. The protein vaccine, the vital subunit protein, that's no matter what I have said, and clover pharmaceuticals they are using. And these type of vaccines are being used in case of herpes zoster. Or, or hepatitis B, hepatitis uh, and herpes, uh, HPV virus, and DPTs. And split vaccines, there is not, uh, there is not, no, no company is going uh, to produce the vaccines for COVID using this platform. So we're going to discussion. But live patent vaccines, there's few uh, Codagenics and Indian companies that Indian bio, uh, uh, biotechs are using this uh, uh, live patent vaccines. So these type of vaccines I already were using in case of MMR, chickenpox, polio, and tuberculosis. And inactivated vaccines, the Sinovac, the Chinese the vaccine, which was uh, planning to do a uh, trial here, but unfortunately that didn't happen. That vaccine is using this inactivated vaccine. And polio is uh, also using this type of inactivated vaccine. So if we consider experiences previous ones, uh, none is in the market, but the, due to the rapid uh, production, uh, rapid, uh, I mean, uh, development of vaccines depending on the two platforms, the RNA uh, uh, vaccines are market available and viral vector vaccines that are very quick to be in the market, quick to be in the practice. Thank you. Next slide. Next slide, please. So that is the summary. I'm not going to that. Next slide, please. So already, we, all, all of you know that we have got in, in the market, there are a few trials, including different vaccines. So we need some evidences, really. We are just, uh, is it really working? Is it really keeping safe? It is really uh, have some efficacy. For these things, we need some evidences. For this reason, I'm going to few just slides, depending on the recent evidences uh, regarding two or three of virus uh, vaccines. Next slide, please. If we look all the vaccines names like Sinovac, Sinopharma, this all they have got only the phase two trial. Among this only four, the Oxford AstraZeneca, the uh, Russian one, though it's a little bit controversial because very small sample size, the Moderna and Pfizer BioNTech, they have completed the phase two trial. So other uh, other uh, others vaccines, include Sinovac, uh, Chinese vaccines, Indian vaccines, and the DNA vaccines which is being uh, produced by uh, the process on the production by InnoVeo, they have got, uh, they are not completed the trials. So we are uh, just uh, going uh, the Oxford and uh, the Pfizer vaccines, what really is uh, evidence we have, uh, we have got from different few trials. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. These are few parts of the world where they have done the study, the AstraZeneca and the big companies, but unfortunately, there is no study in Bangladesh. Though there are few studies in India as well. Next slide, please. Next slide. Regarding the Pfizer, the BioNTech vaccines. Next slide, please. So there, there's, uh, this, there's a few publications on the uh, New England Journal of Medicine. Uh, regarding the safety and efficacy of the vaccine BNT162B2 mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. That vaccine that is already in the market. Uh, this vaccine, if we look, uh, if we look uh, in this slide, this first one is in a younger group. The, this uh, two lines is younger. First, uh, I mean, uh, the bar chart is going for the uh, those one and that is those two. So if we compare this, these two groups, the lower groups are in senior groups more than 55 years. So if you say, if you look at the graphs about uh, bar charts, that you see that there is less, there's less chance of adverse effects, the systemic effects as well local effects 
in the elderly groups, which is a little bit higher in the younger groups. So that means that we are, as we are apprehending that there is a chance of more reactions or more uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, reactogenicity in the elderly group, that is, it is we are seeing from this uh, 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 graphs that is less likely to be in the elderly groups. Next slide, please. That is the sustainability of the antibodies. And you can see, in, in, in respect of all ages, the, uh, after 100 microgram dose of mRNA, that produce high levels of binding and nitrogen antibodies that decline slightly over time, that's expected, but remain elevated in all participants even after three months after booster vaccination. So though we are not sure till how long these uh, antibodies will sustain, but at least up to three months, they were maintained in the study. Next slide, please. So about the safety and efficacy in this uh, in this in this uh, publication, they have concluded like that two doses of an mRNA-based vaccine were safe in the media of two months and provided 95% protections against the symptomatic COVID-19 persons in 60 owners of age and above. And if we look at this graph uh, in this uh, in this small table, that you can we can see the symptomatic COVID was only eight in the vaccinated group, whereas there's 162 in the placebo group. And severe COVID also was much higher in the placebo group. So that gives some uh, a glimpse like that. It is uh, it is uh, really successful and it is really efficient. It has good efficacy in preventing the severe COVID as well as symptomatic COVID. So they have uh, uh, found that it's almost 95% success or efficacy 95%. Next slide, please. So in this slide, uh, we have got some, some subgroup analysis regarding different age, gender, ethnicity, and uh, uh, colors. They have found all the efficacy as almost around uh, 90% or more than 90%. Uh, that means the subgroup analysis have found that the safety and efficacy is also uh, irrespective of uh, uh, ages, genders, or, uh, or any sort of ethnicity. They have done in different parts of the world. So they have found that this cumulative analysis almost uh, all groups that's uh, really their the vaccine worked well. Thank you. Next slide, please. Regarding the, uh, the uh, our most coveted, one most coveted vaccine, the AstraZeneca and Oxford vaccine, uh, that is also under, uh, they have completed a phase two trial and they have also published the data that's the first, I um, mean, published peer reviewed data published in New England, uh, in the Lancet. The next slide, please. Thus, they have also found that uh, their immunogenicity and safety that is almost equal, almost equal in all the ages. Uh, they had not a gross variation. So they came to an interpretation or inference that Chadox, Chadox, that is the, you know, that uh, this uh, the, the vaccine is uh, has used. That's sympathy adenovirus. So Chadox is like that. Sympathy adenovirus, uh, the uh, Chadox one, and COVID nineteen appears to be better tolerated in older adults than in younger adults, and has similar immunogenicity across all age groups after a boost dose. For the assessment of the efficacy of the vaccine is warranted in all age groups and individuals with all comorbidities. So from these graphs, we can see that almost all age groups have the same uh, type of at the same level of immunogenicity across all age groups. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, that is the same thing. They have used uh, the, with the placebo that the, the efficacy, primary efficacy analysis. If you see that uh, uh, that using, that they have used a uh, placebo, the meningococcal AC, WY conjugate vaccine. So if you compare that to higher efficacy in case of uh, the vaccinated groups. So there is a uh, as well as primary and secondary, both efficacy analysis was in favor of the vaccinated group. Next slide, please. Next slide, yes. So regarding this uh, uh, side effects, uh, we can see that, that side effects or I mean local systemic effects also were higher in younger groups, 18 and 55 years group rather than uh, the senior groups. That means it is almost 88% in case of uh, 18 to 55 years group. But in case of 
uh, senior goes to 56 or 16 years, that is only uh, 20 to uh, around 73 percent people are uh, uh, have some side effects or local adverse effects, local effects or system effects. Next slide, please. And if you go for the efficacy, you know uh, uh, that in case of uh, I mean AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine, there is a problem with the dosing. The few doses was a standard dose as a low dose. The first dose was low dose, and second dose was booster dose was the standard dose. There's two groups. Uh, uh, there is uh, some mistake due to the uh, I mean uh, the virus counting uh, by, by spectro photometer. So ultimately, they have divided the, uh, the samples into two groups. So some groups had got low, do, uh, low dose. The initial dose was low, but boosting was a standard dose. And few, uh, the rest of the people uh, have got the both the standard dose, the higher dose of vac uh, uh, virus, vaccines. So in that case, if you compare the standard or low dose, they have found that we have uh, initially was given a standard dose, uh, uh, and as well as next as standard dose, both of the standard dose, they, are, they found the efficacy was 60%. But Mistake in the initial group who, who who received the lower dose and the substitute they got higher dose. In that case, the efficacy was around 90 percent. That was a golden error. I must say that's a golden error because this, uh, because of this error, uh, we found that vaccine have got more efficacy than that in the standard doses. So that is the thing, and their average on the average they found that efficacy is around 70 percent. So. On the on the whole, the, if we use the uh, lower dose with standard dose as a booster, they found it more efficient. That is almost ninety percent. Oh, next slide, please. Next slide. But unfortunately, we have got few things uh, to be unexplored till today. If we go and look at the different vaccines. They have not included any immunocomponent patients. If you look Moderna, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Janssen, Sinopharm, and Sinovac, none have included immunocomponent patients. That is judicial because for just for a new vaccine, the immunocomponent patients are not usually targeted. Hopefully, in the coming uh, months, there will be, we have got some data on the immunocomponent host. Next slide, please. The same things also for pregnant and breastfeeding women. All the studies have excluded the breastfeeding and pregnant women. Next slide, please. The, during the adolescent children, they also made almost all the studies have excluded uh, the adolescent children. So we are uh, still in the dark that, that, that what will happen to these vulnerable groups, like elderly, extremely elderly persons, the comorbidities with the uh, immunocompromised patients and adolescent children, pregnant women, or uh, lactating mothers. Next slide, please. So regarding the COVID vaccines, regarding the, their studies as well as the efficacy, if we just summarize in a single table uh, we, and doses they have proposed, the Pfizer-BioNTech is 95% eff efficacy that they have completed phase two trials and they require two doses at the interval of 21 days. Moderna and is 95% effective, but that is also phase two trial that's when we had completed. They have two doses they also at the 28 days interval. Oxford AstraZeneca, they have, uh, they have got uh, they have the range of uh, efficacy from 70 to 90 percent, and they are also have completed phase two trial, and they have all they are also recommend two doses at 28 days interval. Sputnik, the Russian vaccine, the, uh, that uh, vaccine they claim that is 92 percent eff efficacy. They have completed phase three, they have, but they didn't have yet published, and that is very small sample size. They have uh, prescribed, they are giving the vaccine the two doses. That's 28 days interval. Bharat BioNTech, that vaccine is 92% effic efficacy. Uh, but their phase two is ongoing, but their phase one to trial is not published. So we are not certain about their efficacy really. But they are also prescribing the two doses, that is 20 days, 28 days interval. So next slide, please. So that is the uh, schedule of Pfizer BioNTech. Next slide, please. But problem of all the all the vaccines already we are using in the market, the uh, Pfizer BioNTech vaccines that is being 
uh, used in UK and few other countries, including USA, just today. So if this problem is that, that they have to preserve in very cold storage and they have to be transported maintaining a very strong cold chain. That is the main logistic hindrance for the uh, wide use of these vaccines in different parts of the world for this type of amenities, facilities might be scarce. Next slide, please. So after so long, uh, we have uh, saw few studies, few things, but still we are at the dark regarding few issues, but I've already touched how long will that immunity last? Will the vaccines will be effective in the Indian population? Will this can be used in pregnant women? Maybe or in the children, immunocompromised? What will the long-term adverse effect? And will it, will it really prevent a severe disease? So these questions are to be solved in coming days, coming months, maybe. Next slide, please. That one of the target of vaccine is really, will this vaccine will prevent transmission. The transmission prevention means the interrupting the person to person transmission should be the second most important criteria to evaluate phase two trial. But unfortunately, none of the trials is not designed to essay or to finally comment on this very important issue. If we think that the statement given by the Mr. Jask, the Chief Medical Officer of Moderna, our trial will not demonstrate the prevention of transmission. That said, because in order to do that, you have to swap every people twice a week for very long periods, and that becomes operationally unattainable. So that also another points, another loopholes in the results of the trials that are ongoing in different parts of the world. Next slide, please. So far, we have at our hands to what vaccines we should consider the best for us. The efficacy wise, so far we have found 95% 95, 95 efficient is Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna vaccines. If we think of cost and logistics, the Oxford Genka is far better than Stu. So we have to wait a few more months, really which one is most appropriate for a country like us. Okay. Next slide, please. So this is the, now the world figure, uh, this 90 year old woman, Margaret Kinnan, who was received, which are really fortunate to have the first dose of COVID-19 vaccine. So whole world is watched and we pray we should be protected from COVID virus, which will also be a good signal to the other vaccine productions. Next slide, please. But who will get the vaccines? Let's think we have got the vaccines. There should be some strategy. Who will get the vaccines? If we go for the WHO, go for the WHO recommendations, they have targeted the healthcare professional and social care service, only 3% of population, they should be stage one, they should get the vaccine. In the stage two, the 20 of the population over 65 and high risk, then stage three, the 20 of the population and further priority groups. So that is the strategy for recommendation for giving vaccination in a country that has been advised or recommended by WHO. If we go for CDC or next slide please, they have also the prioritized the healthcare personnel, the nursing recipients, essential workers. So they have faced by face, they have advocated who will get the vaccine. We have seen in the television yesterday that you will see the, all the healthcare stuffs for the vaccine recipients. But we are not sure what is really going in Bangladesh. I am not, I am not aware of any policy regarding the vaccination, dissemination or distribution in our country. Next slide, please. If you look, um, how we'll get the vaccine? You see, there, there is a lot of pre orders, lots of pre orders. Almost all the countries, uh, developed countries, they're pre ordered, including our neighboring country, India, Nepal. But I'm not sure, really. I got the chart uh, from online, but I'm not, there is not many Bangladesh. But they have also pre ordered. The problem pre order is uh, the company is overburdened with production of the vaccines. So we are waiting for government and authorities, they will be also, uh, I think they've also pre-ordered, but not in the graph, I'm not sure about that. Uh, we have to pre-order daily millions of vaccines for our country. 
Next slide, please. But still, there is few concerns in the general population because there's some public with there are you know dentive access and vaccine hesitancy. These are the few two issues that, that also are main hinders in the vaccination of our population. That is also global issue. Next slide, please. Just you will look at the even Britain. They are the two types of Britain said they are likely to take the Pfizer vaccine, but less of the people are really unlikely, even don't know. So even they are not all the population are not prepared to get the vaccine. Next slide, please. And the reason is that, next slide. The reason that the main reason being uh, the vaccine may not be uh, safe enough. That's the public perception. I'm concerned about the possible side effects. There's a good number of people, 21%. I don't believe the COVID is dangerous for my health. Uh, that is, I think, lots of people's perception in Bangladesh as well. I reject vaccination on principle. It is best to let the nature take its course. So do you have a few skepticism about, about vaccination? for these few reasons. This is another issue that we public health uh, frames should be uh, involved in changing these uh, uh, views of our uh, uh, different general populations. Next slide, please. The politics also has a big role in the vaccination problems, you know, to make it popular to overcome these uh, anti-vax uh, groups or vaccine hesitant groups. That all, of the, uh, we, all of you possibly know that American X three presidents have declared they will take the corona vaccine uh, on, uh, on uh, live on, uh, on on in front of cameras and might feel me to build the confidence. The other way, the few other also leaders are in the agonies of giving or taking any anti vaccine. Uh, though there is a, a good a big trial is going on in Brazil on the different vaccines, still the Brazil presidents says he will not take corona vaccine. So next. Uh, even we have, if we have got the vaccine, if we are vaccinated, is it the end of the journey? Really, no. Please, previous slide. Uh, so if uh, that, is, uh, that is a term, that's a vaccine plus. That means we have to be vaccinated, but this is not the end of the journey. We have to maintain our the other, other healthy practices like max duty and social distancing, hand hygiene. So we should not forget these three three very vital uh, health issues to keep us safe from this epidemic and to get rid of this epidemic. Even I am vaccinated. Next slide, please. At the end, I must say not everything. Everybody is not losing. The few sectors, as the pharma sectors, you see that is going higher and higher in the stock market. And this is the 8 December. You can see the Pfizer companies just have a big leap in the share market just due to the first injection in UK. So they're also the, I think they are also in the positive frame of mind, I hope. Next slide, please. At the end, I am. I like to say, uh, possibly, I uh, I've given some few glimpses. There is lots of uh, discussions, lots of things to be addressed. Uh, next slide, please. And there is also a light at the end of the tunnel. We should not give up the hope. We should ready. We should get ourselves ready. Embrace a new frame of life, new frame of lifestyles. Also, hopefully, that next year we will. Enjoy the happy new year in the without forgetting forgetting our social distancing and the, with new hope of life. Thank you. My sincere thanks goes to you all and stay safe, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your amazing presentation. Now it's time for the question and answer session. I can see the whole comment section flooded with questions. But as the time restrains, we can only select few of them. So I would like to request Dr. Fazlir Abdi, sir, to start the question and answer session. Dr. Fazlir Abdi, sir. Thank you, Dr. Prince. 
yes as you have said uh, there are floods floods of question there so i would like to pick some of the important questions uh, i would like to request uh, professor arafat to answer them and uh, the honorable uh, panelist if you want to add anything please uh, feel free to talk uh, the first question i would like to pick is uh, is asked by arfa rahman abha is bivalent uh, oral vaccine immunization capable in reducing the impact of covid 19 So, uh, so the question is: uh, the oral does the oral polio vaccine immunization will give any sort of protection against COVID-19, or is there any sort of impact on it? So uh uh as i can see that our panelists and speaker is okay so I'll... thank you very much i think uh, the question was about that whether the bivalent opv immunization capable of reducing the impact of covid 19 or not i think the answer is no say uh, the covid 19 infection is a completely different virus than the oral polio virus and the fact that uh, in, separate vaccine for a separate virus disease did not show previously any protection against the coronavirus another important point to note that if somebody is going to give a vaccine either it is a opv vaccine or flu vaccine or any kind of vaccine and then plan to give a covid-19 vaccine there must be a duration of two weeks apart So a two weeks apart must be there before selecting another vaccine. Selected 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 vaccine. Yes, sir. Please. Okay, uh, uh, Dr. Jashimuddin. Uh, thank you for your question. The question is uh, the DNA. DNA is not that. DNA is particular part of the gene which contains the protein or uh, which is subjected to be developed a vaccine. So when that DNA goes inside the cell, goes in, uh, inside the nucleus, and then produce some mRNA. according to sequence that is contained in that particular part of dna that mrna the transmitter cytoplasm they started produce the targeted protein or antigen so in that regard that is not directly produced not producing the things but taking the course of that protein going inside the nucleus of the cell then produce the part mrna you know the messenger rna the main uh, uh, media of the blood proteins that trans transfer that transmits to the uh, cytoplasm and there they produce the uh, targeted antigens in this way uh, the antigen produce antibody that is the reason dna that is the way how dna uh, uh, using the dna platform produce the vaccines is it okay am i clear yes sir so mr joshim basically this dna is a synthetic dna which we call plasmid containing the antigenic antigenic part of the uh, of the virus so this plasmid is uh, we know that the this synthetic part have high uh, efficacy to boost the uh, mhc class 1 and class 2 molecule that is the cd4 and cd8 molecule that's why is the synthetic portion but the main uh, outcome will be the messenger rna which is the media i would like to many questions are regarding the safety and comparative safety and efficacy of the vaccine but uh, professor uh, arafat nicely Describe them in their slide. The next question I would like to take that uh, Munadi Al Islam, Pfizer and UK NHS have issued warning for allergic persons. Uh, so, can disease like asthma can be a possible contraindication? So. 
sir please as there is a, a, a caution for allergic uh, person so will it be a problem for asthmatic people uh, regarding the allergy allergy things is uh, 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 considered in any co any case of I mean, vaccines uh, because if someone have got uh, allergy they might uh, lead, uh, have high percent of reaction some of even might have anaphylaxis so in, on the, uh, uh, on the whole the, if you got some severe allergy you should not uh, receive that vaccine but particularly in asthma there is no strict contraindication of receiving the asthma that is not considered uh, to be a, uh, a, a negative point so for receiving that vaccine so in like any other vaccines it is also it is recommended that severe allergic patients should not receive because they have they make a news in the national dailies in uk as well that because few persons who have received the vaccines have developed uh, some sort of severe allergy so it's not a contraindication thank you sir the next question i would like to take from uh, dr khosrud <coughs> Uh, and and many participants asked the same question that what's the current status of the vaccine which has been developed by Globe Biotech, the Banga Vax? Uh, do you have any update on that? Uh, regarding uh, uh, regarding the Bangla Vax, the uh, Globe Tech vaccines, uh, they were planning they after phase one trial and they are planning to phase three uh, trials, but um, but that is has agreement with us. So far, I know the ICDDR. But for some reason, uh, that was not started. And uh, possibly, uh, that I'm not sure really the, what is the present status. I, uh, on, maybe the panelist may give some answer, or even Dr. Abhi can give the answer. But let the status of the death vaccine. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, uh, does uh, any panelist want to contribute uh, with Professor Arafat regarding the update on Banga Vax? I think as far the the Bangladesh, uh, there was a first uh, huge that they have tried their phase one trial in a, a small piece of rabbit, I think, rather than the specific mice or commonly the mammals that has been taken. This is one, but uh, that was a success at this story. They were planning to go for the phase two and three trial simultaneously, and they were actually planning for that. But uh, as far one. They have not started the phase three trial yet. So they are still going on the phase two trial on the part of the dose stimulating and the part on the part of animal still. So I think in the future, they may have a backup with someone in somewhere to start for the phase three large trial because it needs a very robust, very larger base of clinical trial that needed. So they have not started yet. So Globe Biotech is uh, looking for a compatible PRO to do their uh, phase two. They are still looking for it. We have heard that uh, the negotiation with ICDDRB has broken at some point. So they are still looking for uh, conducting the phase two and looking for a CRO to get the available permissions. Uh, the next question is very, very nice and good question. I think many participants wants to know that Farhana Tina. Uh, we will we need booster dose for COVID vaccine after immunization. Should we still have to wear masks? Very important and nice question. Do you need boosting? Do you still need to wear mask? Please, sir. Okay, Dr. Tina. Uh, thank you. Uh, regarding the booster dose, yes, uh, there's. Uh, we have got a few vaccines already. We have got two doses, basis and one is one dose. But regarding the long term long-term booster dose, what you usually give something, a flu vax, something like that. Do you give that? Do you really need that? That depends on the long-term study. Really, we are not sure how long this antibody will sustain in our blood after getting some effective vaccination. It can be six months, it can be years, it may be longer. So I think I'm not yet enough to comment on really we need a booster dose, but depending on the different types of vaccines, usually get two doses, especially the mRNA-based vaccines, uh, usually two doses given vector vaccines, there are two doses. One is uh, at an interval of uh, uh, 21 to 28 days. So these are the things we give, but long term the booster usually is still we are not sure about. But regarding the mask, yes, uh, even after vaccination, we should not give up the mask. We should not throw our mask because mask is uh, important for two reasons. Number one, the, we are not sure what I've said, how long this immunity will persist. So someone might be uh, infected second time. Number two, 
it does not prevent asymptomatic infection. It's not proven yet. So regarding asymptomatic infection, you might have got a source of the infection. So if you don't ear marks, if you are subclinically infected, you might spread the uh, viruses to some other persons. Also, my recommendation is for my it's, it's general recommendation is that therefore self safety as well as to prevent the spread of uh, virus. Of course, after getting the vaccination, we have to wear the masks again. Thank you. So, uh, because of the time, we have already crossed one hour. I would like to take the last question, which is related to the adverse effect, because many people probably in a stage of panic. So, I would like to take the question of uh, Dr. Noshin Tabasum. Uh, would you please shed some light on the severe adverse effect encountered in the vaccine trial? Say, for example, the transverse myelitis case happened in uh, UK. Uh, so please, sir, if you make an overall comment on that, the adverse effect, the potential uh, side effects of the vaccine. Uh, Dr. Tabasso, yes. Uh, regarding the adverse effects, that's my model CBR get for. So there's different of adverse effects. You have said that about the transverse myelitis specifically. Regarding the transverse myelitis, yes, uh, uh, there is few, uh, three cases of transverse myelitis in the AstraZeneca trial. Uh, among this, uh, one uh, uh, one term of this was the uh, mis uh, that was uh, the deactivation of uh, some sort of uh, unexplored previous multiple sclerosis. So that was uh, not due to drugs. Another term of this case is that was reviewed by neuro uh, neutral neurological review was done. That term of this case also was not related with the vaccine. And third one, that uh, group that is not uh, uh, sure, uh, uh, also that is not, I mean, uh, uh, unblinded group. So that is Marx group. So that is not sure. So in regarding the trans myelitis, it is still uh, not uh, directly related with the vaccines. But there are a few cases uh, regarding the Bell's palsy, Bell's palsy in the uh, trial groups. But that is also found that though that is a little bit higher. But if we compare, if they have compared the normal uh, rate of uh, Bell's palsy, the normal uh, then prevalence of uh, uh, Bell's palsy during this time, you see this Bell's palsy, that's almost equal. So regarding this sort of transverse myelitis, still it is not, we are not at a point that uh, that causes, uh, that is being caused by the vaccine. So that was the inference was given by that study group. But we have to wait really, uh, what sort of serious reactions happens in the coming days. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, so uh, the notion uh, basically what uh, what the issue is, it's still not a warning bell sign. We we know that uh, even we, if the time and tested vaccine, flu vaccine, there is always a chance of one in every million case uh, to get, have a serious adverse reaction. So the trials is not even close to that. So still, it is not a uh, issue of warning. So I would like to uh, close the question answer session here. I, at this stage, I would like to go to the panelists. I will go to Professor Mohammed Robed Amin. Uh, but with a question, uh, the last question of today's session asked by Dr. Kuchan, that should I get a, the vaccine if I have already COVID-19 positive or if I am already a COVID survivor, should I get this vaccine? Please, sir, you, you will start to answer with this question and put your comments on, overall comments on today's uh, session. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving me the opportunity to sell something. And first of all, thank you, Arava, sir, for a brilliant presentation. I think he covers everything for a very complicated topic. Uh, vaccine immunology is a completely separate subject. And make it easier and palatable for all the audience was just a piece of great attempt. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, the question that has arisen, I will say that there are some important clinical uh, considerations regarding the vaccine uh, about the recommendation that I would like to say, uh, which has not been uh, addressed in this presentation already. First of all, there are two dosage that has been selected. Many of the dosage are given in the one and 28 days. Only the Pfizer vaccine has been given in between the 17 and 21 days. So there was one question arises, 
whether can somebody give a two separate vaccine or not. The Pfizer vaccine has a recommendation that if somebody is to take the Pfizer vaccine, then they have to take the second dose Pfizer vaccine. This is the problem of the Pfizer vaccines. The big problem, this thing can be arise or resolve if somebody is putting on the part of the vector vaccine. Those are also the DNA vaccine, like the Oxford, AstraZeneca, Sputnik. So they are making an adjustment whether the first dose can be given a Oxford one, second dose can be a Sputnik one or not. But for the mRNA vaccine, if somebody selected a single one, there has to be given. Now about the infection, if somebody has a previous infection, should he be vaccinated? The recommendation is yes. And if you somebody has a previous infection, does it need to test or not? Is the uh, antigen or antibody test needed or not? The answer is no. The recommendation is you do not need to test, you just go for vaccine. One important pointer is that if somebody has an infection from COVID-19, he must be recovered a duration of 14 days or two weeks. So this is the duration that he need to pass as to give a recommendation for vaccination. This is one. Second thing, if somebody is a current infection with COVID-19, shall he be vaccinated or not? The recommendation is no. You cannot take a vaccine during the time of acute COVID-19. That's the recommendation from all these vaccinations, especially for the mRNA and the vector vaccine. Third issue is that if somebody has a reinfection, can he be vaccinated or not? They said that most of the reinfection that has been reported in the literature has been done after the three months period of 90 days. So if somebody has a reinfection day, and in between, he can take the vaccine within the 14 days pass, he can. And if somebody has a reinfection, pass the 14 days again, and he can take the vaccine. Now, somebody has COVID-19 infection. If somebody giving him plasma or monoclonal antibody, can he be vaccinated or not? The answer is yes. But you need to wash out those antibody that has been given by them. It's a plasma or antibody. So it takes around 90 days to be passed after getting the plasma or monoclonal antibody, after you can make a decision to give the vaccination to these people. Fourth tissue, if somebody is having a vaccination, uh, can he uh, go for a drive or go for a, you know, does he need to test or not? I mean, is the test going to be affected by vaccination or not? The mRNA vaccine and DNA vaccine has the propensity that the test, if you do the RT-PCR or even the antigen test, it will not be any problematics by giving the vaccination. So if you want somebody want to make a test to make a diagnosis, he can do it. But if somebody wants to make an antibody test, then you need to think about which antibody you need to check. Because all the vaccine that you've seen presented by science Arafatsar is against the spike protein. So if you make an antibody against the spike protein and see that in the blood, that will not give you idea whether it is vaccinated or it is infection. So the antibody test need to be done is the anti-nucleoprotein antibody. If it becomes positive, then he become infected with the COVID-19. About the pregnancy, you see there's no safety data, but the recommendation is if a pregnant lady is have a high priority, like that he's a healthcare worker, she's a healthcare worker, or means of high priority because of this activity against the COVID-19 in the frontliner, he, is, he should be vaccinated. This is the recommendation. For the breastfeeding, there's no safety data. Still, the recommendation says that if he is in a state of the group which can have developed the disease like high risk group, he can be vaccinated. So these are the few recommendations that has been given as a clinical consideration point uh, on the vaccine issue that uh, has been very highlighted in the clinical consideration of ACIP that I like to share with all of you, because these are the few questions that came up uh, in our mind. Another point is that uh, what should be the upcoming challenge for vaccination schedule and uh, how long the vaccine is going to protect. So what I like to mention that against many of the virus like measles, mumps and others, this gives a very robust immunity. But for the coronavirus, there has not been ample evidence of robust immunity. So that is the reason why what Arafasar was saying, the Pfizer vaccine shows the three months data to show the antibody that it remains there. But what will happen after that, nobody is sure. So we are not going to be saying these things, whether it is going to be lifelong immunity or not. 
a time will say what is going to be happen after six months or nine months. For the timing, we can say these virus, uh, these vaccines that has developed very new ways can give a protection at around three to six month duration of time. So with these few things, I think uh, that was a fantastic to listen to Arvaskar as always. And uh, the questions were huge and uh, these are practical issues. And I will be delighted if the healthcare worker and also the other frontliner who is taking the toll in Bangladesh get the vaccine. And if you give me a, about the opinion, I would say that Oxford AstraZeneca should be our choice. The reason why I'm saying this, this is cheap. This does not need any minus 70, minus 20 degree Fahrenheit refrigerator, which will be very difficult for a country like us or LMIC. Third issue is that if you follow it, Oxford, very carefully the paper, the dosage becomes half dose and the full dose to get a 90 efficacy. And the difference between the Oxford and other trial is that they swap to see whether transmission going on or not. That has not been done by any other studies. Those studies saw whether the patient developed COVID-19 or not. But the Oxford Jenka has shown by being so suave. Means that whether it causes transmission, transmission can be prevented or not, has also been seen by them. So their complete report is going to be published pretty soon. I think it will be helpful for all of us to use. Thank you very much, Rabbi. Thank you, okay. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like to go to our uh, next panelist, Professor Mohammed uh, Mahabubul Islam Mojumdar, uh, with a question again from the chairperson. Uh, from your point of view, what are the upcoming challenges of vaccination? If you, sir, also please cover the uh, who should get the vaccine and how the what are the distribution challenges could happen in our country and of course overall your uh, view on today's uh, uh, talk and session please sir assalamu alaikum bijoy jibosh shubhachcha jani abhim shobaike respected chairperson and uh, speaker as well as the my dear panelists i think the nice discussion about the covid vaccine uh, which is honored by professor sir mohammed arafat he uh, completed the discussion about the vaccine development up to the vaccine uh, distribution all these things so i think i still narrated he left a little thing uh, behind so one thing which is very much important that we are standing in a position where 73 million people or over 73 million people have right back and we had 1.6 million deaths with this pandemic. So in this situation, the vaccine is showing some ray of hope, but still we are in the tunnel. We are not seeing the whole sun. So what to be the next? Now, my experience is that, and my uh, comments are about the uh, uh, vaccine availability, vaccine distribution, and others. I think uh, for us, the uh, suitable vaccine would be Oxford and AstraZeneca vaccine, because it would be low cost, and the uh, transmission, distribution, all the networks are there, which is available in our country with the universal immunization program, we can distribute it very much uh, well with this. Another vaccine which may be uh, suitable, that is uh, Gamalia Sputnik B vaccine, that is also uh, suitable for distribution, but it is not uh, very much uh, oil established still now. Another vaccine which can be kept in the zero temperature or normal temperature that is inactivated vaccine from the China and it is not still in the market. So Pfizer vaccine uh, distribution for our country it will not be uh, suitable, it will not be, I think, possible within short time because it should be kept in minus 17 to 20 degrees Celsius temperature and the transmission trans distribution facility is not very much oil in our country. One important thing is that the which who which people should get the vaccine. I think worldwide, first worldwide, first contender of the vaccine is uh, 
healthcare workers, the doctors, nurses, and the frontliners, and the first contenders. Second, in many countries, their second opinion varies. In many countries, like America, the old home uh, people, or elderly people, are the contenders. In Russia, they have got the uh, policy that they will give the doctors or healthcare workers plus teachers. They will give first and others. And in WHO and others, telling the healthcare workers as well as the, uh, the police and others who are in contact with the public, they should get first. In our country also, we should give it to the healthcare workers and police, our armed force battalion and others, and then other uh, categories. So it should be ultimately everybody will take the will get the vaccine, and for the distribution of the vaccine, I think it should be uh, two ways. In my opinion, is like that. The uh, some people and the uh, underprivileged people and the uh, people who are in front line, they should get the vaccine first, and they should get the vaccine with low cost. And for the some people we should open one uh, corner so that the middle class or upper middle class or higher class people can get the vaccine uh, from the corner from any vaccine corner with the price they can get uh, with a, a normal price they can get uh, but our country i think the vaccine has got the uh deal with uh Serum institute they will take Another thing is that with the vaccine distribution, Interpol is already warning that, that there may be uh, introduction of the fake vaccines in the market with the introduction of the multiple vaccine uh, in throughout the whole world because the Pfizer is uh, already on the field and the Oxford, uh, AstraZeneca will be and even uh, in and the next time that Gamalia vaccine, Sinopharm, Sinovac, all these vaccines will come together. And they will be in the market, in the, toward the whole world market. In this condition, the, our law, law and force agencies should be very much uh, acquainted enough and very much uh, safe enough and keep the eye for preventing the, uh, the fake vaccines to come in the market because fake vaccine will harm our population it will not give the uh, <clears throat> safety to our people another thing is that the all the people like america only 60 percent people are eager to take the vaccine in our country also some of the people are not very much eager to take the vaccine but we are very much successful in giving the child immunization in our country, it is about 90% or more than 90%, which is one of the examples in the, uh, throughout the whole world. So we can motivate our people throughout the media, for our TV, newspaper, and others, and to encourage the people to take the vaccine so that they, are, they may be immunized. And about the vaccine efficacy, a lot of things are told by the speaker as well as Professor Robert Amin about the efficacy how much it will be efficacious in the long run because a vaccine will take uh, 10 years or more than 10 years to have their establishment. But this vaccine come within one year. So it needs a long time to show their efficacy as well as their side effects also. So I think uh, with all these things, I want to conclude uh, my part that we should have a distribution system about the uh, vaccine. We should have multiple uh, vents or multiple uh, corners for the vaccine distribution. We should look uh, for the uh, prevention of the fake vaccines in our country so that it will not be in our country to destroy our people's health. And, ultimate, and after all, we should get the vaccine as early as possible in our country so that our people will be uh, safe from COVID-19. So thank you very much for the nice discussion from Shoaib Mohammed Arafat and from nice discussion from uh, Professor Robert Amin also. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir.
so i think that take home message for us is uh, to achieve the herd immunity you have to vaccinate at least 65 to 70 percent of the population which is not possible within a year or so because the distribution will come by lot by lot so and uh, we know that it's in the trial it's showing 90 percent efficacy but we really don't know what will be the remaining efficacy when you will try it on different gender, different ethnic group, on different age group. So, uh, so the ultimate solution is mask, which today's speaker and other panelists have uh, emphasized. And we have to keep in mind that vaccine is not only for individual protection, it's actually for the community protection. So you will get the ultimate benefit of vaccine when you can vaccinate a certain number of people in the community especially for any viral infections. I would like to um, uh, now move to the last segment of our session. Uh, I would like to hand over uh, to this session to the chairperson, the governor of ACP uh, Bangladesh chapter, Professor H.M. Najmul Hassan, sir, uh, to have his remarks and also move on to uh, conclusion of uh, today's uh, webinar. Thank you very much, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Dr. Rabbi. Dr. Rabbi, am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, at first, I want to congratulate uh, Professor Sal Mahmoud Arafat for his wonderful presentation on this topic. For the last couple of months, we are arranging some topics of current interest. But at this moment, I think uh, vaccine is the hottest topic. And everyone is eagerly waiting to know different aspects of this COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, but a tiny virus, within a period of 12 months, it has overturned the whole world. It has changed the social, cultural, and economic condition of the whole world. And at this moment, 7 to 8 billion people of the whole world is eagerly and desperately to looking for to, rescue, to get rescue from this uh, problem and they are eagerly waiting desperately to return back to pre-COVID era. And vaccine is thought to be one of the important uh, aspect by which it is possible to get rescue from this uh, this uh, this COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, Professor Soel Mahmoud Arafat, he has tried to develop an overview of COVID-19 vaccine from its development to up to the current status. And all three uh, learned panelists, all of them are medical educa educationists and learn on a, they are renowned physicians, they are researchers of this country. All of them, I am nice to see all the four renowned physicians and research or research uh, clinical researchers in in the same platform and it is he has rightly said that possibly covid-19 vaccine is not uh, totally will be able to rescue the uh, humankind from this pandemic and this vaccine plus period has to continue for certain months or years like marks, social distancing, hand hygiene, and also uh, testing and tracing. We human beings are to continue this period, this for certain period. Uh, I want to congratulate again, uh, Professor Soel Mahmoud Arafat and all these three learned panelists for their excellent contribution in on this topic. Uh, dear audience and listeners, uh, for the last couple of months, we have arranged this program mainly for young physicians, for the residents, and particularly postgraduate trainee who are going to appear in the postgraduate examinations in the coming months. And I am thankful to past Governor Professor Kaji Tariqul Islam, Governor elect Professor Kanabul Kalamajad, all the members of uh, Bangladesh Society of Medicine. SCP chapter Bangladesh, and our two uh, uh, secretaries, Dr. Rafiq Islam, Dr. Sharmista, they help us a lot. And Dr. Pince, he is our IT consultant. Without his help, it, was, it would not have been possible. Uh, 
uh, with this, uh, I uh, possibly we will get a pause for one month after January. We will hopefully, inshallah, we start this health talk once again. With this again, after uh, at this end, I want to congratulate Professor Arafat and all the th panelists for your contribution with your learned knowledge in this uh, health talk. And hopefully we will start this program in February next. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sadly, we have come to the end of today's program as always this season. As always, we have learned so many things from Sir today. Many, many thanks to the speaker, the chair, the panelist, and last but not the least, the moderator, Sir, for managing time for this program from their very busy schedule. I would like to thank all the audience who were with us throughout the events, especially those who have asked very important questions. Hope you got your answer. If you joined late or couldn't see the whole program, there is no need to be worried. You will find the whole program on the YouTube right after the live session. As I already mentioned at the beginning, today is the final episode of this season. We have learned so many things from the living legends of our country throughout the episode. You will find all the episodes on our YouTube channel in case you want to recap or share the knowledge with others. I would like to thank go our governor, H.A.M. Najmul Hassan, sir, for making this health talk program possible. But there is no need to be worried. Hopefully, we will be back with the season two on February 2021. Hope to see you all on the season two of the health talk. Until then, take care and very good night.